Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today I'm gonna to be showing you something kind of cool. Right here I have the new Anycubic Photon Zero. Um, Anycubic was nice enough to send us one of these to review. Um, they didn't tell me what to say or anything like that, so I'm just gonna you know, tell you what I think about it. Um, so today I'm gonna to give you a little tour around it. I'm gonna tell you what I like about it and what I don't like about it. I currently have three of these Anycubic Photons, so I'm kind of I'm gonna kind of be comparing the two, but this isn't necessarily a comparison video, rather than just giving context to what this machine actually is. So the first thing we're gonna look at is the appearance, kind of like a first impressions, if you will. And the first thing I realize is it has a very polished look. Uh, the whole thing is very square, uh, which is a modern aesthetic that I'm really fond of. Um, and everything's metal. There's a lot of premium materials in this, which I really like. Um, there's not a whole lot of plastic. Pretty much the only plastic is the lid, the knobs you use to screw everything down, and uh, actually the vat, and we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, another thing that I really like is the feet of the machine are kind of tucked into it, so I'm not sure if the camera's gonna pick it up very well, but at the right angle, looks like the printer's floating. I think it's really cool. So now let's just take a little walk around the thing. So over here, this would be the right side of the machine. We have the USB towards the front. And I like that on the older Photon, it's on the side in the back, uh, which was still better than the Lego Mars. They have it on the back of the machine. I'm not entirely sure why. But anyway, this is a lot easier to reach. Uh, so, you know, it's a lot more user friendly, I guess. And also on the side, we have the on off switch. And above that, we have a vent. This is the uh, intake fan for the machine. Then moving on to the back, we have our power plug and our label. Uh, label says this thing is 4.7 kilograms. That's roughly 10 pounds. So, you know, not bad. And then this would be the left side of the machine. Nothing, it's just a blank side. But once again, you get to look at the, the nice metal finish of the thing. I really like it. And then back on to the front, that's the screen. And we'll get into that in just a bit. But for now, let's take the lid off of this. And let's talk a little bit about this build plate. So this build plate, I'm actually kind of partial to uh, for a few reasons. Uh, the first reason is that it's completely flat. So let me actually steal the build plate off of the older Photon. There we go. And on this one, we can see that the build plate is clearly like tapered down. So as this is coming out of the vat, resin is running off and falling off the, uh, the build plate. This guy on the other hand, as it's coming out of the vat, it just catches so much resin. You end up with just a large pool of resin sitting on top of the build plate. I'm not a fan of that because if you're switching out colors or anything like that, you have to clean this thing and it's kind of a pain to clean. You know, you, you just end up with resin all over your hands and it's, it's just a messy process. And then also on the back side of the head, uh, we have a little, you know, little cave, little crevice where it also catches resin. I'm not a big fan of that. But one thing that is cool with this head is uh, these four screws. I, we have two on either side. If you loosen those up, you'll realize that the head is two pieces and these pieces will move around freely. Uh, this is how you level the machine. So you go into the machine settings and you lower all the way down. It'll press the head into the LCD screen and just go a little bit further and then all you have to do is tighten up these screws and then you're leveled. It forces the build plate to be perfectly parallel with the screen. This works about 70% of the time. Um, you know, it takes a little trial and error of just like, as you screw it in, you know, tighten everything up, it changes a little bit. So, you know, it's just minor micro adjustments, but overall very easy and beginner friendly. And then also, you'll notice on the bottom of the build plate, it's actually been sanded, or I guess not painted. It's just a brushed aluminum texture right here, and that really helps with bed adhesion. 
I've actually taken some of the build plates from the Photon and sanded them myself just to help with that. So I'm really glad they did this and this kind of tells me that they're listening to their uh, customer base and I really like that. So let's screw that back on and we'll take this vat and we'll move it to the side here for just a sec. And let's take a look at the top of this machine. So the LCD screen, uh, you'll notice has some tape around it and it kind of looks like the tape is holding the screen in place. No doubt there are screws and brackets on the inside of the machine that keep the screen from moving around. Uh, this stuff is probably just to keep resin from getting into the uh, internals. But uh, I'm sure it's very functional, but it doesn't look that good. At least not to me. I, it's kind of a pet peeve of mine, but it just doesn't look that polished. Um, and then this machine has a new style of, uh, of Z support. Um, it seems very sturdy to me. I don't know much about these things, but you know, it, it doesn't move unless the whole machine's moving. So it's very sturdy. I wouldn't really worry about that being an issue. Uh, next, let's take a look at the bottom. So here we have uh, our exhaust fan and then more vents. And if we compare the bottom of this machine to the older Photon, you can kind of see how much more polished the Photon Zero is. On the Photon, you can see the electronics, like these vent holes are really large, so you can get all kinds of dust and debris in there. And uh, you know, I don't have any numbers, but it's probably affecting the life of the machine. This one's very closed off, um, just kind of has a more polished look to it. So now, let's take a look at this vat. Yes, it is plastic, but uh, I don't think it really has affected me yet. There's actually a lot of pros to it being plastic that I like. Uh, one of them being the, the spout for pouring the resin out of the vat. It's a much more smooth and gradual spout, and it actually goes to the edge of the vat. And I think they're able to do that because it is just a plastic mold. Uh, it makes it very easy. I can actually pour the resin out of the vat into a bottle without it getting all over the bottom of the vat. On the AnyCubic Photon, um, I'm always having to just pour it a little bit and then the resin gets all the way down onto the bottom and then into the bottle. And it just makes for a messy process. Also, the vat has some grips here along the side of the the vat. I'm not sure if the camera can pick that up very well, but it does make it easy to hold on to. The uh, normal Photon one can be slippery, especially if you have some resin on it. Um, so I like that they added that, just a little extra support as you're holding it. And then also on the inside of the vat, we have some measurements kind of molded into it. So this helps me a lot because I have a problem. I'm constantly overfilling the, uh, the vats and the heads dip down all the way past the screws and uh, you know it just gets your hair head all greasy and full of resin so this is, actually helps me a lot i've noticed this right away that i use that all the time and then there are also screws on the top of the machine that kind of makes the vac kind of hold in place i like that a lot so now let's go ahead and plug this thing in and let's turn it on and we'll boot up and we'll notice right away that the UI is borrowed from the Photon S. And I like that, it's a more of a modern looking UI, uh, much better than the UI on the older Photon. So on our home screen, we have three different options. We have print, system, and tools. In our print menu, this is where you can find your sliced files where you can print. In system, we have three options here, language, service, and info. You quick click a language that's gonna switch your language over. So just click that top one again to change it back. Um, service is just gonna give you their, uh, their website address. And then info is just everything that's on the label on the back of the machine. And then if we go to tools, we have move Z, so that helps you level the machine. Um, UV detection, that's going to light up your screen. That way you can kind of test it, see if you've broken it by accident or what. And then Z equals zero, again, leveling the machine. Um, we have our sound on off. Uh, I always keep it off. On all these machines, I turn that beep off. I hate the beep. 
so much. It just fills me with rage every time I'm going through menus. So that is the first thing I always do is go through and silence the machine. At the top right here, we have a little lock icon. And what that is, is actually a really cool feature I like on this machine. Let's grab the lid again. On the back side of the lid, you'll notice there's a little white sticker. If you get this machine, do not take that sticker off. Very important. Because you'll notice on the back of the machine, we have a little sensor. And also this little sensor is kept in place by 3D printed housing, can't help but notice. Um, but anyway, while this machine is printing, if you take the lid off and that sensor can no longer sense that little white sticker, the print will pause. And then if you put the lid back on, it automatically resumes. So it's great if you're just needing to check your print real quick and you don't want the, uh, the printer to keep going while you have it open. Um, if that is a feature you don't like, you can disable it by pressing that little lock icon. Um, not sure why you'd want to have it off. It, I think it's just a good safety precaution to keep that on, but that is something that I'm glad they added with this machine. Now going into one of the features or aspects of this machine that I read a lot about online and uh, people are a little unsure about it is the screen resolution. And yes, this machine does have about half of the resolution as a Photon or Photon S but it's not what it seems. Uh, a lot of it is, has to do with the, I guess, like pixel density. I'm not entirely sure how these LCD screens work, but I do know it's similar to a, a TV. If you have a large 100 inch 4K TV, its pixel density is worse than a small 1080 TV. Um, pixel density is what you want. So it is pretty decent. Um, I have printed small models on this thing and I have noticed no decrease in quality at all. This has printed everything just fine. Um, I have noticed nothing. So I've, I've actually done uh, test prints with both of these machines and I'm constantly forgetting which one I printed on which because there's no difference. There just isn't. Also, this printer is very, very quiet. And I love how quiet this thing is. When we first got it, um, I was sitting at my desk and I set it all up and I was just super eager to get printing with it. So I just threw it on my desk real quick and started up the print. And I was a little nervous because it wasn't making any sound. Uh, no, this thing is just really, really quiet. You can definitely have it on your desk while you're working and just completely forget about it. So there's a lot of good things about this machine, um, you know, as well as a few that I don't like, mainly being the build plates the way the screen is taped down. And then also one other thing I didn't tell you about, there's no fan inside of the lid. So as this thing is printing, there are fumes just kind of building up and building up inside of here. And then the second you crack the lid open, all of those fumes are rushing out and it's gonna stink up your room. So, you know, just open it outside or um, open it in a well ventilated room or something but that is one thing you need to know if you get this machine is there's no internal fan to kind of get rid of the, uh, the odor that's building up in there. But um, you know, overall, it's a fantastic machine. I like it a lot. You can't beat it for $180 or $170 actually. Um, so it has all of the features of the, the Photon and Photon S just in a smaller package. It's really well built and I like it a lot. So. Anyway, that's my review. I hope you guys enjoyed it and thanks for watching. Until next time.